What's, What's up, up Los, Los Angeles? Angeles? <laughs> we told you we weren't leaving. <laughs> We've moved in. We're here. Yeah. We live here now. We yeah. rotate between Galaxy, LAFC, mm -hmm. really just depending on our mood, like yep. where we're going to sleep, where we're going to live. It's worked out well. Life's we're been good. Happy. I love that that was the second week in a row we got to do that intro. That just makes me happy. All is right in the all world. All is right in the world. We have a really special episode for all of you. It's a profile and a casual chat. I learned a lot. We had a lot of laughs of learning about who are the two head coaches of Los Angeles. You know, they're both guys who played for the U.S. Men's National Team. Yep. You know, American head coaches. And it was riveting conversation. It was great. And I feel like, especially for a guy like Steve Chirondolo, who's in his first year coaching at LAFC, I learned a lot about I feel like I walked away from that interview knowing kind of what this guy was about, what his coaching style is, and I loved it. I was so impressed with him. And Greg Vanny just once again kind of establishes himself as He's an OG the, now. The best soccer brains Big. and also mm -hmm. Like, just a really good human. And a the really two of them dude. overlapped a little bit, obviously, with mm -hmm. the U.S., uh, so they know each other. They talk here and there, kind of like Chicha and Vela. Yep. You know, Vanny and Chirondolo. <laughs> and uh, P.S. Steve Chirondolo surfs. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Take a listen. We are thrilled now to be joined by the head coach of the LA Galaxy, Greg Vanny. Greg, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me here. Your second time on the call up. Yes. Is it, I mean, yeah. you, you were just so thrilled when you got the ask again. I did. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited to be out here, and it's a beautiful day. It is a beautiful There's day. not a lot of repeat customers on the call-up that we can get to come back. I know. I'm really honored. <laughs> and Dax McCarty, I think, are the only two <laughs> who ever said yes to That's that. No <laughs> <laughs> um, Greg, we mentioned, you know, we talked to you before you were taking over for the LA Galaxy, now year two. How are you and the family settling into LA life? Great. We uh, found a house. We're in Redondo Beach. Oh. Uh, enjoying it. The three boys are in the academy. My daughter is about to go to the University of Iowa, which turns 18 today, actually. So, happy birthday! Uh, yeah, happy That's birthday! That's amazing. Right. Um, so, big day. Everybody's everybody's settled in. It's been beautiful and uh, nice to be back in Southern California. So, how has soccer culture changed in LA from the time that you were a player here to now being the coach of the LA Galaxy? What have you seen? Yeah, I, I think you know, in terms of the fan base and in terms of the culture, it's always it's always existed inside of LA. I think it's always been super competitive, especially at the academy level, uh, at the youth level. We've always had huge support at the Galaxy, whether we were in the Rose Bowl or here. Uh, the difference now coming back is is LAFC's in town, which which adds a more of a rivalry feel than existed when I was here before, uh, and that's created some you know some bad blood uh, between those two teams and those fan bases, which makes it more exciting, really. Which is it adds just another layer to it all. For sure, the youth environment has grown as the sport has in, in the entire country, but um, it's exciting to be back and, and to be in such a project like the LA Galaxy and the opportunity that exists here. So if and when you're out and about at the beach, grabbing a drink, and you get recognized, is it always love? Or like, have you gotten any like wild LAFC fans? No wild LAFC Good. fans. Stay away, uh, LAFC fans. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, mostly, mostly love. I think that's because I've been in the South Bay mostly, and maybe it's a little more LA Galaxy friendly. I'm just right. just a hunch, but uh, we'll see. So, uh, Kevin Acevedo showed us a video of your son Dylan, uh, yes, scoring an absolute banger, yeah. absolute banger from from a free kick. Um, what? How? I want to know this sort of like the approach that you take with your kids, like as like between dad and coach, like how do you how do you walk that line, Greg? I, I, I try to be supportive. I try to give <laughs> bits of information. Uh, I try not to be like the primary coach for them, but uh, I try to be dad, but also dad that has some knowledge about their path and Fair. where they're trying to get to. Um, yeah, and I try to encourage them just to keep working and to work hard, enjoy the process, but understanding a little bit about what they're trying to, to read on what they're trying to execute, things like that. You know, I can't stay out of it completely, but I, I try to be helpful. But My dad uh, was my coach growing oh, yeah. up, yeah. and it was like, I feel like he was always harder on me Aww. than he was anybody else. Yeah. Well, he was and it was, one that's true, that's true. <laughs> he's but, not, he's a yeah, but it was, it was tough. And then like, we've talked about it now that I'm an adult and he was like, I kind of feel bad. He's like, I feel like I was really, have really you ever hard coached on you? your kids? Like been their actual like coach, coach? 
Uh, I have. Um, not not like their sole coach, but obviously when we were in Toronto, I was helping within the academy mm. and working with those coaches. A lot of times I try to work with the coaches who then work with the players. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, sometimes I can't keep my mouth shut. And I have to say something. Uh, so I'm involved. But, but ultimately I want them to, to really enjoy the process. And uh, just if they love it and they are obsessed with it, then they, they have a chance because they're in a good environment to grow and to learn the game. Claudio Reyna said the something quite similar mm -hmm. when we were talking to him two weeks ago about coaching Gio Reyna and just what, you know, you have to toe the line. Yeah. And uh, no dad has <laughs> perfected, no. that's for sure. I used to yell at my dad because he didn't give me enough love from the sideline. Oh. He wouldn't say my oh, He'd only say my number. Like, go number nine. And I'd be like, Dad, I, I want to hear you. So, you know, there's no perfect <laughs> line, especially especially for us gals. Yeah. Uh, when I was here for your game one of the season, um, LA Galaxy, New York City FC on ESPN, what a game it was, but in the car, I was sitting next to Taylor Twelman, and I, you know, just always ask him, like, so, like, did you play with Greg? And he goes, yeah, he was my roommate for the national team. Is this true? Can you confirm you were Taylor Twelman's roommate at one point? Yeah, I think we roomed a, a couple times. Oh, yeah, okay. Together. He seemed to have very um, firm <laughs> memories of that, but I think he was the, young, he was the younger guy. He, he would so. have been the younger. Of yeah, so he was, like, probably very starstruck by you. Yeah, well, I don't know about that, but maybe. <laughs> Who, so... <laughs> Who were who was your like go to roommate back in your your playing days? Uh, like, Kobe, <gasps> you and Kobe. Yeah. yeah. What was that dynamic like? Kobe read a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was way into books, fantasy books and sci-fi books wow. and stuff like that. He was a big reader. Uh, I was computer. I was already writing stuff up on coaching and player <laughs> development. And it, was, it was it was sad in some ways, but it, it, it framed my future. Now. I was yeah, gonna say. It, it I think it worked out, future. Greg. But that's that's what I did with my downtime, and he was a reader in his downtime. But it was that's yeah, so we've, interesting. I'd say it worked out for Kobe Jones and Greg Vanny. Just yeah, I think so. Life yeah. worked out. I think so. Um, you know, Greg, that's it's funny you bring that up. That that's even what you're doing in your downtime, because anyone you talk to just talks about. And again, similar with um, Claudio Reyna, like soccer IQ. Your soccer IQ is incredibly high, obviously, to do what you did in Toronto and here, and that you're always just talking about soccer, MLS your kids are playing like is what is something you're doing when you're not watching soccer or thinking about soccer yeah it, it's a that's a funny one I I like to well um, sometimes I'll just go for a run I'll I'll go to the beach I'll hang out with the kids I'll watch movie here or there or a different TV show uh, I'm probably into some reality shows that I wouldn't admit on camera is it the Real Housewives no, By not chance? The Bachelor. No, I can't say that it's that one. Okay. I have watched The Bachelor. <laughs> I have. I knew it. Uh, but, yeah, so that it's just something to escape for some period of time. Because the, the game's an obsession. Like, there's always a problem. There's always something that you're trying to solve, whether that's within your player pool, within the opposition, within... There's always something that, you're, yeah. that has your mind working. So no, it's I something just important. mindless to get away from... It's that. a balance. Yeah. It's a balance, Greg. Right. And so now we're going to ask a real hard-hitting question. Um, fashion. We okay. got to we got to talk about it because in Toronto you were known for the scarf. I think we talked. It was about iconic. It was cold and it was. So it was. It different. was necessary, but it was also yeah. you know it made a fashion statement. Yeah. First game of the season. I'm watching Jill interview you, supporting my friend. She was really watching could, to see what you were. All I could think I, I was saying. like Greg Vanny's wearing glasses. This is the new. This is the new <laughs> scarf. This is the new. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now is this? I mean, do you need the glasses? Is this, was this a style statement or was this more of just necessity? Uh, it is necessity, but not necessarily just in like my everyday mm -hmm. life as I'm watching the game. But I've hit, I think, an age where I, <laughs> looking at my phone, reading anything. Like, I'm desperate for the glasses now. So instead of having readers that you always take off and yes. put on, I got something that is a they little more They looked great, Greg. Yeah. Thank you. I, I appreciate think, that. No, yes. Right? They were, they, they, frames? Yeah, they, were, they, were, they were fantastic. That. They yeah. looked very, very Keep good. the glasses rotation going because okay. I feel like that could be your iconic That's the new thing. That's the new scarf. The glasses are the new scarf for yeah. Greg Okay. Game time. <laughs> uh, just rapid fire, first thing that comes to mind. Greg Vanny, what is the best thing about MLS? Competition every week. What is the best thing about Los Angeles? Uh, the weather. Worst thing. Wow, worst thing. Traffic. <laughs> traffic, not traffic go. Yeah, traffic. Yes. Uh, one word to describe LA traffic. 
painful. <laughs> We have so much about traffic. <laughs> when you're sitting in LA traffic, traffic what are you listening to? Wow. Uh, 90s hits. Oh, nice. Yes. What's like like your favorite that. song? Oh, my gosh. Um, We're a good oh, sing along. Good yeah, I know. It got me now. I'll have to come back. I'll have to think about think it. Think about it. Come back yeah. to us. Okay. Uh, Greg, when was the first time you kicked a soccer ball? Wow. I don't even remember. It, I don't know. I must have been really young. I had an older brother, so I was just hanging around. Did I they play? Been, did you, yeah, you play did, soccer? Okay. So, three. long time ago. Age three, two, age three. three two, three. I don't okay. Know. Um, Greg, rate Dignity Health Sports Park on a scale of one to ten. Seven. Rate Bank of California <laughs> Stadium on a scale of one to ten. Six and a half. There we go. <laughs> there we go. What, Greg, when was the last time you were nervous? Um, good question. Maybe it, maybe the opener just a touch. Just I get a little anxiety. Opener? Yeah, mm -hmm. you don't. It's the first time the team's coming out. I get a little bit of a mm -hmm. little bit of anxiety. I was very nervous that day <laughs> <laughs> for different start. reasons. But yeah, so it's a good nervous. It means yeah, exactly. it make you feel alive. You know, it's it's, it matters. Channel it matters. Channel that energy. Yeah. Channel that energy. Um, Greg, name the time that you were the most starstruck. I, I would probably say when uh, I came here and David was getting starting to play with David just the first interaction just what was that like uh, I don't know it all happened really fast it's a really long story but it all happened fast because I flew in like on the morning and then I was playing in a scrimmage game in preseason like instantly but um, yeah but it was just kind of taking in where I was in the moment I was back with the galaxy I was now in this uh, on the team with David, the amount of just, uh, I don't know, awareness that his presence had brought to the game and the club and his past, it was just, it was a little bit different than other moments. I guess we took that. a selfie with him when we got here. It, right outside. Sure did. I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> That's our celeb sighting. Um, was there ever a time, Greg, that you thought about leaving soccer altogether? No. Figured? Greg Vanny, what is your favorite food? Favorite food, I would say, gosh. You know, I don't think about any of these things. I just go through, like, I power through life on this. Uh, Soccer all the time. Normally, I would say, like, a good steak yeah. uh, is priority. Yeah. Okay. Last but not least, the first word that comes to mind to describe your team. Exciting. Woo! Love that. Well, we could not be more excited to bring in a guy who has played in three World Cups for the U.S. men's national team. Um, you were recently inducted into the Soccer Hall of Fame, and this is the first year head coach of LAFC, Steve Turundolo. It is so good to be sitting with you here in sunny Los Angeles. Thanks for joining us today. It is sunny. Thanks for having me. Um, you have said that this, the season is a marathon, not a sprint, but boy, do you have your guys clicking. You are unbeaten in the first five games. What do you like about what you've seen from your team so far? I can assure you our, our sprint meters are where they should be in the games mm -hmm. and during the week. Um, we're happy with our performances in both boxes. So in the opponent's box and in our own box, uh, I think we're playing in a mature manner, uh, meaning it's a way uh, to get results early, which is very important to get off and running uh, in a new season with a new group and a new coach. So I'm, I'm happy with that. But certainly there's lots of room for improvement in between the boxes and, and the way we're combining and playing and creating chances. Steve, you grew up in San Diego, then spent 20 plus years in Germany. Now you're back home of sorts and we'll get into Germany in a moment. But how's your family and how's everybody settling in? Uh, thank you for asking. Uh, kids are fantastic. They've <laughs> lost their little German accents. Oh they're no. like German accents? Yes, How yes. So they're they? born in Germany. Oh my, gosh. my girls are eight and six. So and they're too young to hold on. Yes, they are flying in school. Uh -huh. They've adapted amazingly. Kids are super resilient. Yeah. So it's really, really fun to see and to watch them uh, just kind of go through what I went through as a child. So you mentioned that you're um, a surfer. You grew up in, in San Diego. Have you been able to, uh, to hit the surf? Do you have time for it? Being the head coach, I imagine you're pretty busy with team stuff. But do you ever get out and on the ocean? where's the go-to surf spot? Yeah. There's always time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Good. And I will make time. And yes, I have been out. Um, I live out in the west side of LA, so 
Um, Venice, uh, Malibu, those are some pretty accessible areas for me to go surf. That's nice. Can you, if you tried, can you surf in Germany? Yeah, absolutely. You can <gasps> surf all over Europe. There's plenty of surf in Europe uh, to find. The window is shorter in the summer because it's really <laughs> cold. Wetsuit? Yeah. So, yeah, but okay. it's not the normal two, three millimeter. It's three, four, and like full on hoodie. And, and like northern Germany. Yeah. So yeah, there is okay. north, but it's uh, pretty windy up there. The best surf is in Portugal and in Spain. And that France. sounds way better than surfing in Germany, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah a little yeah. bit. A little bit. Okay. What was life in in Germany like, and how does it compare to? Los Angeles in the West Coast. That's a it's a very large question. I don't <laughs> know if I can unpack this the right way. Um, I would say life in Germany was uh, more day to day and simpler and slower, um, but in some ways more meaningful. And for a small example, for to food, you don't go out to nothing against Costco, but go buy foods for the entire week. Uh, you don't need a big tub you, of you mayonnaise. Don't buy in bulk and a giant thing of mayonnaise or peanut <laughs> butter. You go and buy what you eat for that day. And um, there's something really nice and reassuring about that. Um, and it, and it kind of keeps you grounded. So that I miss, that's great. Yeah. Um, but the opportunities and the speed of life in LA and having everything at your exposure 24 seven yeah. is also great too. It seems like for you, you know, having played your entire career for Hanover, but then coming now to major league soccer, taking a head coaching job, it just seems like you seem so relaxed that the timing just all worked out. Was this something you always hoped would happen or is this kind of a surprise full circle moment for you whether you believe it or not this was kind of planned uh, amazing no, i know right? i want to uh -huh. plan my life like right that. i know i know can you manifest our <laughs> destinies for us? us please um no <laughs> we'll have to figure that ourselves but uh i was pretty sure and uh, about what i wanted to do post career would be a coach mm. Um, and I wanted to get my first steps in coaching in Germany and get the entire coaching license process out of the way there first. Um, and after that, I always said, um, I love this Why league. Why did you want to do it there first? Um, because I, I valued the coaching school and okay. I think it's very good. Mm -hmm. um, and my entire career was there, so it was only natural to finish it there. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to get my first, like, first steps of coaching there um, because if I can figure that out, then I liked my chances of being successful here. And I always had an eye on MLS. I love the league and how much how much better it's gotten. I wanted to come as a player, but injuries cut that short. So the next uh, logical step would be come as a coach. So let me ask you then, we talk about, okay, the differences of lifestyle and all that, but what about Bundesliga, you know, watching it, uh, assistant coaching in it, playing in it, and then coming here. What's kind of some of the biggest differences and similarities that you've seen that you've maybe had to adjust to or things that have struck out, stuck out to you? The obvious differences are, um, it's a different group, type of player. Mm -hmm. um, so different nationalities, different language, predominantly uh, Spanish in our locker room, which Spanish speaking players, which is fantastic. Uh, reminds me of how I grew up. So mm -hmm. um, for me, not a problem. Um, I think those are the obvious differences. Uh, as far as style of play goes, um, because of the, the way the league is structured, the rules we have and, and the salary caps, um, it's predominantly an offensive league. So a league that will score goals, uh, which we all love to see. And I think if you watch the Bundesliga and a lot of European leagues, it's very calculated, somewhat destructive. Um, and the way the leagues are set up with relegation and promotion, mm. um, there's a lot riding, so there's maybe less risk involved. And our league uh, is not afraid to take risks, which um, I love being a part of. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, this club, LAFC, I mean, what they've done in a, a short amount of time is, is pretty remarkable. And I feel like it's a club where expectations are always going to be pretty high. The supporters are always going to want to do well. The 3252 is absolutely incredible, as you, as you now know. How much pressure did you feel kind of stepping into this environment, knowing that the expectations were going to be high and always will be? Was that something that uh, crept into your mind at all? Yeah, fun for me, right? Yeah, right? Um, the club is amazingly run. Mm -hmm. um, they're very well organized. Um, everybody is in it for the right reasons. Yeah. Um, we are set up for success here. Um, John has done an amazing job. The owners are um, very good at what they do, but also incredible human beings. Um, everybody is quite hands on. Mm -hmm. um, and then the technical staff, you know, with Ante and Mark, um, I can not be here for a week and things will be just fine. And they are more than capable of running the show by themselves which is what we were looking for in a staff. So it's, it's, uh, it's a great situation to be in. Um, pressure has been a part of my life forever. Right. And so um, I don't tend to see it as a hindrance. 
um, as much as it's just a part of my life. It's mm -hmm. there. It, it will always be there. Yeah. Um, and if used in the right way, it can be a motivator. And that's kind of how I view it in what I'm trying to mm. uh, help the players with. And if you have a fan base like 3252 behind you, it can be a lot of fun as well. Yeah. We can attest that it's a hands-on club because we were lost at the front door and John Thornton, John Thornton <laughs> found us, let us in, and, and us brought us here. Right so. here. <laughs> Thank you for that, John. <laughs> Um, let's talk about the U.S. men's national team. Just one of 11 guys to play in three World Cups, 2002, 2006, and 2010. So who better to ask than your thoughts on the draw that came through this last week? Could have been worse. Could have been better, right? True. So uh, I think it's a fair draw. Um, if, if we want to make it out of group play, we have to play well and beat yeah. some good teams. And that's the case in this group. And is that a fair kind of benchmark for the U.S. that like you should make it out of the group and then everything else is yeah? How do you measure their success? Um, yeah, good question. Um, I think for this group, so after missing the last World Cup, unfortunately, a few of our key players don't have that experience going into this World Cup, and yeah. I'm not sure any player does. Yeah, um, has played in a World Cup. Let's be involved in this group. And so, going off of my own personal experiences, it was much easier the second time around. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, hopefully the guys get a few breaks and make it on to the next round because those experiences will be invaluable for the following World Cup here at home. 2026, y'all. Oh, my gosh. I can't even. I'm so excited. Um, okay. Let's talk about some of your favorite World Cup memories because there, I mean, I, there are so many moments that probably pop to mind, but what was the, what was the one that stands out the most to you? The Algeria. Algeria. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, Very clear. Um, you know, being there on the field, I was exhausted and I was too tired to go run with the other guys. Uh, so <laughs> I had my own little uh, pile that nobody saw. <laughs> oh, Tim, no photos? Tim Howard and Carlos. Oh, you just stay hung out in the back. You're, You're like, we're not going back. up there. There may be photos. Too far. I don't okay. know. I'll, I'll ask Carlos Pocah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's Carlos amazing. Uh, <laughs> but um, afterwards, years later, I saw a compilation of all the sports bars around the United mm -hmm. States of the mm. celebrations and the goals and I was like wow that was actually pretty cool and so that for sure is the moment for me right because before social media and everything you're so far away you're mm -hmm. disconnected from all of it I was at I was working in an office job mm -hmm. and I w was at work watching the game on my computer and I screamed so loud and I got in trouble it's an iconic moment sorry for getting you in trouble <laughs> yeah I got in trouble um you played every minute of the 2010 World Cup under then head coach Bob Bradley <laughs> a former coach here what was the number one piece of advice that he gave you about coaching in the LA sports market um I think you know Bob was a master of, of uh football tactics um you could sit and talk for hours about the game with him and it's incredibly uh, knowledgeable, useful, and entertaining at the same time. Uh, he's very passionate about it. But I think watching Bob and, and listening to him, managing the group and making sure you are thinking short term but at the same time long term, and your message and your uh, your words should be chosen accordingly. Um, that would be the 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 tips that I've gotten and taken from Bob. Gotcha. Love it. Before we let you go, Steve, let's get into a quick game with you. Uh, full disclosure, we played with Greg Vanny yesterday. Yes. So uh, yeah, that's kind of who you're going How do you know against. Greg? Yeah, are, Greg are you guys, know are you guys like well. buds? Yeah. Are, do you, I mean, like, have you been texting this week? Or are you like, hey? No, we haven't been yeah. texting this week. Just, uh, just haven't. Yeah. Um, but um, I've reached out to Greg in the past. There's, yeah. There's no problems with Greg. Okay, no, Greg's we played together. The he's a very team. nice man. Yes, he is. <laughs> he's right. a very good coach, too. Yes. Great answer. <laughs> Game time with Steve Trundolo. Let's get right into it. Steve, what is the best thing about MLS? Mm, best thing? Um, I, I would say um, the parody in our league and the, the sheer size of it. And um, I love all of the, the marketing involved as well. Love that. Um, best thing about Los Angeles? There's nothing bad about LA except the traffic. That was the next one. So would you say the worst thing about Los Angeles is? I would say the traffic, the traffic. yeah. Fair. One word to describe LA traffic. My afternoons. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> it's just a constant. What are you doing when you are in LA traffic? Are you listening to a podcast? Are you listening to music? What's, what's If I'm not on the, the phone, um, in the mornings, I'm usually on the phone with people from Europe, uh, which was a part of, part of my life for a long time. Uh, so the time difference allows that. In the afternoons, it's a podcast, The Daily, New York Times. I love Highly recommendable. Daily. That's great. We love The Daily. We do love The Daily. Who are you talking to from Europe? Who's like your number uh, one? Friends, other coaches, yeah. um, 
uh, right now, during the week, it's usually other coaches just kind of keeping up on things over there. One of my good friends is coaching my old team, Hanover, so um, mm. they're not doing so hot, so he's calling okay. with a lot of questions. Are there right a now. bunch of uh, LAFC fans in Germany now and in Hanover? Because you All were, the, over the, place. were you the mayor yeah. of Hanover. Is that is that? This your is uh, Did you kind of keep the title when you left. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't been back yet. We gotta uh, check. I'll let you know. I'm gonna go back <laughs> in the off season. And I'll let you know. All right, you to the city, um, Steve. Rate the. Great Bank of California Stadium on a scale of 1 to 10. 10. It's perfect. It's, a, it's hard to beat. Okay. Um, when was the last time you were nervous? Uh, before the Colorado game. The first game. Okay. Um, so you have a, a preseason and you, you have your checklist and you go through it and you see what, what you've do achieved in training. But you really never know until the first game. So I, I'll, be, I'll be very honest and admit I was pretty nervous. Uh, rate Dignity Sports Health Park on a scale of 1 to 10. <laughs> Um, it's a few years older now, um, so I'm going to say six and a half. Greg gave it a seven, so you're not even so far off from uh, Greg Vanny. When was the time you were most starstruck? Oh, um, I can tell you. Uh, Will Ferrell here, his first time out of <laughs> A big Will Ferrell fan, personally, love all of his movies. When he came in and he was like he the, was the goalie. The goalie, the goalie. that's, that's right. your favorite Will Ferrell movie. Oh, oh wow. Um, I'm going to say Anchorman, just because I'm from San Diego. I love Elf, and when I saw him once, I like wanted to remember a line and bring it up to him, but you, I went blank and I couldn't remember you know one was amazing? Elf line. He's so he's like so knowledgeable about the game too. Like he's he's a, he's incredible. Like he, he could literally like just like be an, an analyst if he wanted to. Um, Steve, what's your favorite food? Um, I'm gonna say just chips and salsa, a little, oh. little, little guac. Like, I'm a sucker for that. If it's on the table, it's it's done. That it's is, my, I could crush yeah. chips and salsa every day, every day. Is that really a food though? I don't know. Of I mean, no, no, I think it is yeah. because like it is something you crave, right? Oh, okay. like, absolutely. Yeah, it's a food. Uh, when was the was there ever a time that you thought about leaving soccer altogether? No. Greg said the same. I love that. Um, What's the first word that comes to mind to describe your team? Um, a group. We are a, an extremely strong group. Um, maybe a better term or a word would be family. Family. That's beautiful. What a way to wrap up I our know, game. I know. I love it. Well, Steve Tarandolo, Thank you so it was an much. absolute pleasure. Thank you. Good luck this weekend and come back on the podcast anytime. Yeah. We would love to. Thank you. And yeah, maybe um, we could do like a little surfing episode with... Rodney Wallace is trying to get us to surf for the I know. Team, I'm gonna, I, I think I'm picking Steve. I feel like Steve Rodney. would be a better teacher. I got you guys covered. Here for this. Well, obviously, we are here for this and all, all the sunshine. But since we are in Los Angeles, Jill, I feel like I have to give a shout out to Angel City because I don't know if you saw their kits. They took the field for their first game and they released these incredible kits with like these like palm leaves so on them chic. like it's white with like the pink and the black <gasps> and I was drooling I was like I, I must have one I must have one for those of you that are um devout listeners you know that yes. this is us trying to get a jersey exactly right we're just putting it out there that we love uh, these so you said palms they're incredible they're they're white um a little pink little like grayish mm -hmm. charcoal you said palms. I thought then because the angel, maybe they were wings or feathers. Oh, they gave me feather vibes. That I mean, honestly, it could work both ways, right? Because palm it. tree synonymous with Los Angeles. And I just want to shout this out because City. I know that there is a call up slash Bravo Teak V crossover of fans. <laughs> I know there has to be out there. And for any of you that were it's also <laughs> moved by Jen Shaw's outfit at the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City <laughs> reunion, also <laughs> feathers. So like feathers are it. Feathers are in. Feathers have been a part of my life. And, like, say what you want about Jen Shaw, but she's also a bird lover, folks. You're right. <laughs> so it, I'm a bird all, aficionado. It all makes That's sense. That's where this is coming it from. It all makes sense. It all Susanna. makes sense. <gasps> Full disclosure, when we went to your lake house... Mm -hmm. There was a like bird Bible. Oh yeah, that's, and I that's my truly mom and dad loved reading it. Uh, yeah, I know you were. You kept picking it. I up. I had a bird mobile mobile in my room when I was like fourteen. Like that's for babies. Your love of birds just I knows no birds. ends. Two cans are my number one. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> what are your number one fun <laughs> facts? Fun <laughs> facts. Share that with us, call up people. Oh gosh. You know um, what? That here for this in itself took uh, such a turn that we only need one today. I know. I know. <laughs> we were gonna do two. Well. 
Well, no, because we want to put this on you, actually, because yes. I think like what we are both here for is, we, you know, we've been in Austin. We have been in Los Angeles, able to sit down and do some in-person interviews, which has just been incredible. And also being thank next thank to my bestie you. is the best thing ever. But we want to do this more, mm -hmm. right? And so we want to hear from you guys, our listeners, our viewers. Where should we go? Yeah. Where would you like to see the Susanna and Jill duo do their thing? Like, where would be fun? Warm weather. I have some ideas, but, you know, we yeah. um, we leave it up to you guys. You tell us. And tell us where you want to go, right? Yeah. The world's opening back up. It's fun to be doing this and to be able to do this and do this safely. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope all of you kind of get to live out a week like this. Amen. Because it's been good for the soul. So good for the soul. Highly recommend. Um, this has been amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Thanks for tuning in, as always. We love you. We love Los Angeles. See and we'll you see you next time. week. Not... <laughs> Not from Los Angeles, right? Wah, wah. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs>What's up, everybody? It is Susanna Collins and Jillian Sackovitz, co-hosts of The Call Up. And if you want more Call Up action, hit like and subscribe right here on YouTube, right there. And also make sure that you download every episode of The Call Up every single Tuesday at 5 o'clock Eastern time or anywhere that you get your podcasts. And while you're here, why not check out some of these other videos as well.